Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to post a few final thoughts on A Raisin in the Sun. We were finishing that play up this week. So this video focuses on Act 3. The play ends with a few, you know, everything kind of wraps itself up. Um, first of all, As Asagai invites Benitha to come back to Nigeria with him, um, where she kind of has this option to to practice medicine, at least that she understands it. Um, so we're kind of left with this question at the end of whether or not she's going to actually decide to do that. And that's one of the things I wanted you to post your thoughts about this week, um, how you think you would answer that question. What decision do you think she would make? Um, Walter invites Mr. Lindner back over. Again, the, in Act 3, this is after Walter has sort of learned that about $6,000 uh, of the money that his, his mother received from his father's insurance check. Um, he planned to use it to open this liquor store, and he gave it to his his friend who then ran off with it. So this is after they've lost the money, and the family is just kind of, like, destroyed by this. Um, but then Walter comes up with this plan. He thinks maybe we'll, maybe we'll accept Mr. Linder's offer, offer. So he invites Mr. Linder back over, plans to kind of put on a quote-unquote show for him, and to accept his financial offer not to move into the new neighborhood. Uh, but by the time he arrives, the movers also show up at the same time that Mr. Lindner does, so everything kind of culminates in this one moment. They have to make this decision, and Walter has this change of heart. He tells Mr. Lindner they don't want to, they don't want his money, and that they will not be moving. They will be moving after all. Sorry. Um, and the play ends with Mama going back into the house one last time after the movers have kind of taken everything out and grabbing that plant and joining her family on their move to their new house and neighborhood. So some of the, the questions that come up for me, and again, some of these I've posted for the discussion post this week. Um, first of all, is Walter to blame for the loss of money? Uh, I think it's easy to say that, yes, maybe he is because he's the one who had the money and decided what to do with it. Um, but I also wonder if there's kind of a more structural argument to make about or an argument to make about the other factors going on uh contributing to his decision and like why his associate decided to run off with it um so i, I guess i just wonder if that's actually you know on the surface seems like a simple question but maybe it has a more complex answer um secondly i want to look at this exchange between benitha and asagai um because it seems like they're talking about one thing, but it also seems like there's a lot, a lot of uh, themes in the play sort of culminate in, in this conversation between Benita and Asagai. Um, so one question I have is, is Benita just shedding another interest, like her guitar playing, like her horseback riding, which, you know, Ruth and Walter sort of make fun of her earlier on in the play for just being kind of fickle with her interests. Um, and is is medicine basically one one of those just becoming another thing that she's like losing interest in um, when she tells a saga that she doesn't want to be a doctor anymore? Or is there something a little bit different about this example uh, because of sort of how it's come about um, because her brother got rid of the money that she was supposed to that was supposed to put her through school so that she could study to be a doctor? Um, so I, I do want to look at that exchange in a minute. And I also want to think about why why you think Asaga is asking Benita to come come with him back to Nigeria. Uh, we we talked about in this play how there's kind of these um, two proposals for what progress look might look like. Um, what vision of progress is the play endorsing Benita's or Asaga's or even Mama's, um, and maybe how would you define those? Um, you know, are they? is this play kind of offering assimilationism versus black nationalism or are there, is there kind of a more nuanced um, alternative to those two binary options, I guess. Um, and finally, does Walter redeem himself with what he tells to Mr. Lindner? Um, has miasma been purged here or has his dream only been further deferred? If we think about where the title of the play comes from, uh, Langston Hughes is asking the question, what happens to a dream deferred? And, you know, what actually what has happened to that dream in this play? If we 
We talked a little bit last week about how it might be represented by this house plant, which Mama runs back in and grabs at the end of the play. So maybe that suggests that that it is something is kind of changing. Um, but again, all of this is up for discussion. But I do just want to um, go into the text here and, and to try to address this question of this exchange between Benitha and Asagai. So first of all, is she just setting, shedding another interest when she tells Asagai that she doesn't want to be a doctor anymore? So if we look back at this moment in the play, um, it is kind of the opening of Act 3. Uh, Benitha begins by describing this, this moment from her childhood where her friend Rufus uh, split his head open on the sidewalk when he was, um, he was sledding and she was, she remembers being really amazed that like the next, the next time she saw him, he was, he just had some stitches and that his body was all fixed up. And she says, I wanted to cure. I used, it used to be so important to me. I wanted to cure. It used to matter. I used to care. I mean about people and how their bodies hurt. And a saga says, well, you've stopped caring. And she says, yeah, I think so. Because it doesn't seem deep enough, close enough to what ails mankind. It was a child's way of seeing things, or an idealist's. And, and then she even sort of sees a Sagai as kind of being an idealist or a, a child. Um, she says, you are still where I left off. You with your talk and dreams about Africa, you still think you can patch up the world. Cure the great sore of colonialism with the penicillin of independence. And again, her cynicism here is because she can't kind of see, is I think very much informed by her experience that she's just gone through with um, how Walter has given away her, her future as she sees it, right? So in some ways, she's talking about Walter here um, and what's going on in her own house, even though she's talking about, you know, in some ways, the continent of Africa and this um, seeming seeming continent-wide uh, shift towards independence and political power, again, in the 1950s and 60s. She says, independence and then what? What about all the crooks and thieves and just plain idiots who will come into power and steal and plunder the same as before? Only now they will be black and do it in the name of new independence. What about them? And again, maybe she's talking about her brother here, um, who, you know, took her money and who she might characterize as an idiot for, like, entrusting it to somebody who just ran off with it, right? Um, but Asagai says he's, he's more hopeful, right? That will be a problem for another time. First, we might we must get there. And where does it end? End, whoever spoke of an end to what? To life, to living? An end to misery, to stupidity. Don't you see there isn't any real progress, Asagai? There is only one large circle that we march in around and around each of us with our own little picture in front of us, our own little mirage of what we think is the future. And he says, that's the mistake. And he says, it's a mistake to imagine it as a circle. And I think it's interesting that we're kind of given Benitha's maybe more feminine um, image of a circle and a saga's more masculine image of a line here, right? It isn't a circle. It's a, it's a simply a long line as in geometry one that reaches into infinity. And because we cannot see the end, and because we, we also cannot see how it changes, and it is very odd, but those who see the changes, who dream, and who will not give up, are called idealists. And those who see only the circle, we call them the realists. And, and then Benita says, well, based on the experience I've had in this house, while I was sleeping in that bed in there, people went out and took the future right out of my hands. And again, that's Walter, right? He took the money. And nobody asked me. Nobody consulted me. They just went out and changed my life. And so I, I think part of what's actually being discussed here is also this kind of, this discussion about gender in this discussion about what progress looks like for African Americans in Chicago or for Africans in Africa, right? Um, Asagai says, I guess, yeah, I guess I just want to point out that um, it seems like Asagai isn't quite seeing things from Benita's perspective, and Benita maybe isn't, isn't quite seeing things from his perspective either. Um, 
And so they, they continue having this debate. And he, Asagai gives this, again, very kind of hopeful. He says, don't you see that there will be young men and women, not British soldiers, but my own black countrymen to step out of the shadows some evening and slit my then useless throat? Don't you see they have always been there and that they always will be? And that such a thing as my own death will, will be in advance. They who might e might kill me even actually replenish all that I was. So for a Sagai, independence is, it's important that um, even if mistakes get made, that they are made independent of this colonial rule that has existed in Nigeria. Um, it, it, that, that independence is kind of that first step. And he acknowledges that there will be issues. Um, from from the people who then take over but uh and and again as i tried to explain in my last lecture in class that that kind of is exactly what happens in nigeria a, a civil war breaks out very shortly after nigeria gains independence so it's almost like he's able to kind of tell what what's going to happen but for him it's more important that that independence and that civil war is still a step towards progress um and beneath is being more cynical here but then he says, um, he, he says, uh, bah, 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 bah. then when it is all over that you come home with me, right? So he invites her to Africa. Um, 300 years later, the African princess rose up out of the seas and swept the maiden back across the middle passage over which her ancestors had come to Nigeria, home. I will show you our mountains and our stars and give you cool drinks from gourds and teach you the old songs and the ways of our people. And in time, we will pretend that you have only been away for a day and that you'll come. Um, and she, you know, she gets flustered and he basically leaves here with, with that thought kind of sitting in her head. But I think it's, it's interesting to pay attention to like what a saga is imagining that he will offer Benita if she comes with him. Because later when she tells her mother about this proposal that Asagai has made, she assumes that she's going to be practicing medicine in Africa. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure that that's what Asagai is proposing here, right? Um, it almost sounds like he wants, he wants a, a wife and maybe wants a wife in a more traditional sense, right? Where... So in a, in a way, there might be some miscommunication going on here, and it might be because um, as this kind of circle and line imagery uh, suggests, it might just be a difference in gender. Um, the, let's see, sorry. Um, the other... Yeah, the last place I want to look in the text is is um, when Walter sort of invites Mr. Linder over and kind of experiences this change of heart. And he ends up saying, I've worked as a chauffeur most of my life. My wife here, she does domestic work in people's kitchens. So does my mother. I mean, we we're plain people. And well, my father, yes, he was a laborer most of his life. And my father... He almost beat a man to death once because this man called him a bad name or something. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, is that what I mean is that we come from people who had a lot of pride. I mean, we are very, a very proud people. And that's my sister over there. And she's going to be a doctor. And we are very proud. And again, this is the first time that Walter is acknowledging his sister's dream to be a doctor. And he says, I called you over here to tell you that we are very proud and that this, this is my son. He's the sixth generation of our, of our family in this country. And we have thought about your offer. We've decided to move into our house because my father, my father, he earned it for us brick by brick. We don't want to make trouble for nobody or fight no causes. And we'll try to be good neighbors. And that's all we got to say about that. We don't want your money. So he experiences this change of heart. And I guess... Um, my question here is, has my asthma been purged here or has this dream only been further deferred? I mean, in one sense, yes, this is the first time that, that Walter is kind of showing pride in his family, but at the same time, um, I guess the question is, what is that going to look like? 
So keep that in mind this week.